Good morning, everyone. Today's flash webinar is called Why Good Job, or the Two Most Dangerous Words, Changing the Culture of Praise. I'm your host, Dave Malter. This flash webinar series is brought to you by Expert Online Training. I'll tell you a little bit more about Expert Online Training in a second, but first I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Dave Malter. I'm the director of the Toro University Masters in Camp Administration in Leadership, and I'm also a frequent speaker at camp conferences around the country. I earned a BA in Communication from James Madison University and a master's degree in Writing Studies from Montclair State University. I've been involved with camps and youth development for over 20 years as a camper, counselor, administrator, teacher, and consultant. In addition to my work with camps, I'm also a professor at Temple University's Fox School of Business. I work with the American Camp Association as a staff trainer and helping to develop new and innovative educational sessions for several camp conferences throughout the year. My passion is really deeply rooted in providing educational content and opportunities for camp professionals at all levels. I've also published articles in trade journals and on various websites and I serve as a professional development chair for the American Camp Association Keystone Council of Leaders, as well as being the conference chair for their fall retreat. Expert 2007 by Dr. Chris Thurber and his friend Evan Halte. It's a website that hosts a library of video training modules for youth leaders. Since 2007, more than 4,000 camps and youth programs have subscribed to EOT to complement their wonderful on-site training. No director has enough time to cover every topic during on-site training, so expert online training is there to fill in the gaps. I'm proud to say that I'm on the expert online training faculty. I'm involved with them in several exciting projects. Expert Online Training has more than 100 videos on a wide range of topics in several categories, which you'll see on the screen. If you want to learn more, just visit expertonlinetraining.com. It's a great format. Basically, we have one host, which is me, with expertise in a topic area. I'll give you some information for 20 minutes, and you are free to follow up with questions via email or the questions tab that you'll see on your screen. This short format doesn't permit discussion during the webinar, but I really do encourage you to get in touch with me at the email address on the screen, and I'll be happy to share any information, research, or answer any questions. So if we're all ready, we'll get started. So first of all, let's talk about why, we'll he why we're here. What's wrong with good job? Before we start, I want you to know that there's absolutely nothing wrong with good job. What I want to talk to you about today is really about how to readjust the way that we give out praise in our environments. It's dangerous because the research has shown that college-aged, high school-aged students who are, who are hiring are not really capable of finding value in their work without a ton of praise. So we need to somehow adjust the way that we're praising our staff to make it more meaningful, and I'll talk more about that research and how it applies to camp in just a few minutes. So my message is readjusting the way that we de deliver praise in our own environments. So we're not going to change the world, but maybe we can make an impact as our staff re-enter the worlds that they're coming from, whether it be school or work. So what are my goals for this flash webinar? I want you to have a better understanding of what your staff's expectations are when it comes to the praise that they hope to receive while they're working for you. I want you to be able to evaluate the culture of praise at your own camp and see ways in which you can adjust and look at how those adjustments would happen and look at how we really are going to recognize staff moving forward. So the first thing I want to show you is what's really going on with our staff. So first the anecdotal, which is something that you'll all be familiar with, the camp directors and other youth development professionals are frustrated. Uh, by their staff and the type of work ethic they might be getting 
hiring staff has become much more difficult. Finding young people who are willing to do the type of work that we need them to do is becoming increasingly hard and increasingly more time consuming for everybody in the industry. Getting staff to perform while at camp is getting in the way of the goals of camp. So really, while we're trying to get our staff to do their jobs, they're getting in the way of the youth development part, which is why we're all in camping. They don't want to follow our policies. I'm sure this is something that you've all experienced. There's a lot of questioning policies. They feel like they're not trusted, or they're so used to having all of this access while they're at home or school that they don't understand why they're losing these privileges when they get to camp. And I want to guarantee to you that the struggle is real, that we're all experiencing these types of anecdotes at our own camps, in our own environments. There is a lot of research being done on what's going on with these students, and some of that is what I'll discuss now. So the research shows that the past few years have really seen an increase in students who are ill-equipped to handle criticism. They truly believe that they are special, they deserve special treatment and they exit high school with a sense of fulfillment and accomplishment even though they really haven't done anything yet. They've gotten into college. That's the extent of their accomplishments, but to them, the amount of pressure to do that has made them feel like they've really fulfilled some sort of lifelong goal and really accomplished something in their lives, and that's the attitude that they're coming into your environment with. So just briefly about the research, there is a lot of research. I have a lot more. I'm going to go over it briefly just because of the type of format that we're in. Don't have the time to cover it all. So in psychology today, Dr. Gray does a lot of writing about college-age students. And one of the things that I really want you to focus on as we go through this presentation is this second quote about young people really are oriented toward extrinsic goals and less orientated towards intrinsic goals. So they're really focused on what's coming from outside and this praise and feeling of accomplishment from outside, from their peers, from their teachers, from their bosses, more so than what from inside. They don't have a sense from the inside that they are, are trying to accomplish anything or feeling a sense of pride. A major university head of counseling who remained anonymous for obvious reasons also wrote that when it comes to growth for young people, it really depends on striking the right balance between support and challenge. So in our case, support is really praise, and challenge is really not giving praise, and being okay with giving criticism, which sometimes I feel that as camp directors and youth development professionals, we're afraid to give to our staff because of the reactions that we get. So again, keep that in mind, support and challenge. The past president of the Association for University and College Counseling Center Directors really put this into a great format. They don't, we talk a lot about in camp, when you go to conferences about the campers and teaching them grit and resiliency, and we need to start talking more about giving that to our staff. How do we give our staff the kind of grit and resiliency they need to do the job? And that's really what my focus is in this presentation. Where does all of this start? Where did all this come from? I'm sure we all remember helicopter parenting was a big term a few years ago. Well, uh, Julie Lithcott Hames, who's the former dean at Stanford University, calls it overhelping. And her quote at the bottom here is that students, by the time they get to college, are breathless, they're brittle, and they're old before their time. Felt that was really poignant for us to all understand that they've gone through so much already by the time they get to college that they're already old before their time. And it's something that I really want you to keep in the back of your minds as we go through this. So today I'm not trying to change the world. I'm not trying to say that we can change the culture of praise outside of our environments. But I am asking that we fight the good fight within our own environments. And why do we need to do this? Well, first of all, to get better performance out of our staff. If we're treating them differently and really holding them to high standards, they'll perform better which will help them serve our youth better, which is really what we're all here for. When I work at camp and in my role now as a 
as a leadership member is I really focus more on the staff. I still, you know, I'm a little bit older and don't have quite the connection with the campers as I used to. They do like to play Gaga or basketball with me and kind of beat up on the old guy. But really, I, I really take a lot of pride in mentoring the staff and helping them become better prepared to enter the real world and really figure out what's going on. So how does all of this translate to camp? I think we'll all agree that as an industry we are quick to praise, which is not bad. I think it's what makes us special and that we are really a, an, a special place to work in a special environment. But our staff between the ages of 16 to 25 have come to expect a trophy. And they always think that something's wrong. Think about any time you approach a staff member at camp and they always give you this look like, oh my gosh, what did I do? And they always are looking for that positive reinforcement. They are stressed at home with their friends on social media. They come to your camp or your environment with a lot of stress and baggage that they don't know how to unload. They don't ever see anybody else getting criticized. They're so used to Instagram and Facebook and lives that look perfect that they feel that their friends are perfect and they're never getting in trouble and they're never getting criticism and this is really how they feel so they feel that they need to be perfect as well. So first we're going to take stock of what praise looks like at your camp. So it's asking yourself simple questions. Do you hand out awards? Do you give out money? Is it a pat on the back throughout the day? Is it just a smile and a good job? And is this coming from you as a director or a leadership member? Are staff performing because they know they will get something? Is this why that they're doing their jobs? Because they think you're watching and they're only doing when you're watching because they think maybe they'll get something out of it. So you really have to take stock of what praise looks like at your camp from a leadership point of view. You then have to evaluate who should be giving the praise. Should it be their direct supervisor, a leadership team member, you have to think about how do you decide and relay that information to them. So who should be giving praise? Is this something that's intuitive or can we really guide the process? In my courses, in my, my talks with directors, we always talk about intentionality and programming and the way we market our camps and the way we build our programs. So can we also be intentional in the way that we give praise? And I believe that it is something that we can do. While it is intuitive and it's something that you recognize, we can still guide our staff to praise each other and to understand how they'll be recognized throughout the summer. We also have to understand what the different levels of job performance, and that's what the next few slides will, will focus on, is are we looking at basic expectations or are we looking at the above and beyond, which we'll call exceeding expectations. Think to yourself, what do these look like? How do we train our supervisors or leadership to re recognize the difference? And I propose that we provide feedback differently for each. So meeting a basic, basic expectation should not receive the same type of phrase as going above and beyond. So basic expectations, I can explain to you as a hot dog vendor. Seems like a nice guy. He does his job. He's probably not getting tipped a lot. He's making hot dogs and he's handing them out. And that's his job. And he does it well if he's just giving out hot, hot dogs. To me, that's what a basic expectation is. It's contractual. We don't need to give out praise for these types of job performance. But what we can do is we can train staff how to provide immediate positive feedback to each other. So instead of if you're down at the pool and you're a supervisor and you see a counselor go into the pool, you don't have to pull that counselor aside every time and say, good job for going in the pool. That was in their contract. You probably spoke about that in the interview. Instead, train the lifeguard staff to recognize those counselors who are doing their jobs and say, you know, good job. Thank you so much for getting in the pool and helping all the counselors and, and, and campers get into the pool as well. It doesn't have to come from supervisors. Staff also need and they deserve acknowledgement. It's really a matter of where it's coming from and who's providing them with that praise and for what. So what does exceeding expectations look like? I'm going to show you a short video. I'm going to apologize in advance. It's going to be choppy just because of the sheer numbers of people that are on this call. So you can look it up on YouTube. His name is Candy King. So after you see this, if you want to watch more. So I'm going to show you about 30 seconds and then we'll, we'll move on. And again, the video will be choppy.
I understand that maybe some of you didn't hear the audio and that's okay, you can go look at it later. But the basic premise was, here you have a gentleman whose job is to, is to serve cotton candy, but he decided to go above and beyond and he turned it into a huge show. And you can watch online that he has tons of videos and he does this all around the world now. And he decided at some point, I can do more than just give out cotton candy. So he, he dances, he sings, he makes shapes, and you'll see that kids gather around him and he does it at night and it glows in the dark. It's pretty phenomenal. And it's just a decision that he made to, to exceed the expectations and go above and beyond. So exceeding expectations, in my view, is going beyond the contract. Doing something that's never been done before at camp, it's something that's selfless, that comes from a true place, it's impactful, it's for the good of the whole community. So these are actions that are being done by a staff member that really have a broader impact than just the basic expectations of being a camp counselor or being a lifeguard or whatever their, their role is at camp. But this is something that you have to decide. You have to make the decision that you're going to make a differentiation between basic expectations and exceeding expectations. So how do you establish or reestablish the culture of praise at your camp? Well, you have to take stock of what the basic expectations are. What are your basic expectations? And be clear about those. I encourage you and implore you to include a session about praise in your staff training, what it's going to look like, why certain things will receive praise and certain things won't. I want you to be really intentional and really talk to your staff in a meaningful way about what they can expect. You should be developing a program that recognizes truly exceptional staff, going above and beyond, making a huge effort. Again, they're so used to being recognized for every little piece and they, they thrive off of that. We need to change that perception so they do the job that we need them to do. This is something that needs to be transparent. You need to be open and honest and clear with your staff about this and leave it not as a mystery. It's very important to this generation that they understand, that they have all the instructions, that it's clear to them because otherwise they feel left out, they feel attacked. So it's very important that this generation understands exactly how this is going to work and what it's going to look like. And again, I implore you to not be afraid to criticize. Let them know that in addition to this idea of praise, there are going to be times where you or a supervisor is going to criticize them. And it's not that you're yelling or screaming, which is usually how it's perceived, but you're doing it in a way that's constructive because you want them to, to leave after the summer and you want them to do better in whatever environment they're going back to. That's your goal. Your goal is to help build them up as better people, much like we want to do for our campers. So don't be afraid to criticize and let them know that this is something that's going to be part of this program. Really, I want you to know also that ex exceptional work can't be defined or explained. You can provide examples like I did, but ultimately it's going to come from a pure and honest place and it's important to praise the best immediately so other staff can see what it consists of and maybe they can make a decision like the Cotton Candy King about how they're going to behave and how they're going to take something to the next level. You don't want everybody to be line painters like the graphic shows. That becomes a major issue at camp where, you know what, I could have picked up that trash on the ground, but it's really not my job. Well then they're not even doing the basic expectations and doing their basic job descriptions. You want a staff full of people who will look at that and take that branch away and then paint the line. That's what you're looking for. And eventually that will become a normal procedure and you can make exceptional work even higher. Remember that this is going to be an evolving program that's going to take time and refinement. It's not going to happen overnight. It's something that's going to become part of your culture and it's going to grow just like any other program at camp. It's going to be something that you have to push and you have to have your supervisors and leadership push with you and they really have to take ownership of it and make sure that it's being framed in the appropriate way. So I bring it back to fighting the good fight. And what I want to leave you with is really remembering that we're not going to change the world. We don't have that power to change anything outside of the environments that we're in. But what I want you to do is I want you to go out, I want you to really think about what your staff are used to, the type of praise that they're used to getting, and how it's affecting their work ethic, their 
ability to recover from failure, their grit, and think about how you're going to help them through that and help make a difference, even if it's just for the, the week or the seven weeks or the eight weeks that they're with you, to help them become better when they go out into what I like to call the real world, in quotes. I want you to keep that in mind and always fight the good fight. It's important and it'll pay off and you'll feel pretty good about it as well. So with that being said, I want to thank you for your time. I want to make sure you know that we have another Flash webinar coming up in January. It's called Wisdom from Within, Creating a Homemade Symposium with Mike Sladden, who's the director of Camp Pathfinder. Excuse me. It's on Friday from at January 15th at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. You can register, again, go by going to expertonlinetraining.com. A recording of this session will be on egg.com later today, so you can watch it again. Again, you can ask questions in the question tab, or you can email me directly. I'll be happy to share anything, any of my research. And uh, on behalf of the entire expert online training team, I want to thank you for tuning in today. If you missed any part, again, just visit the blog page of expertonlinetraining.com. The whole recording will be up there. Again, I'm Dave Malter. I'm wishing you a wonderful holiday season and a very happy new year. Thank you again and have a great day, everybody.